Hello everyone, bonjour to Lamont. This is Renee Jarrett with Not Sorry for the Story, an unapologetic take on current affairs right out of Canada. Well, good day to you on this Remembrance Day weekend where we are commemorating the service of both fallen soldiers and those that continue to serve amongst us. We know that there has been an emphasis, of course, on the past world wars and therefore those soldiers, veterans who have since passed. And my father and I got into another one of our lively discussions. And um, as I've said before, much of what you have heard through my column or not sorry for the story comes out of conversations with him. And we had a conversation about, again, commemorating the dead. And it seemed very blunt. Like, why are we commemorating the dead and not those who are presently living? And I asked the question, so what are we saying? Um, the same way that we are displeased when we see the forefathers of this nation being disregarded and their heads cut off of statues and thrown down, we are upset about this. Some of the sons and daughters of this land are upset about this. And so what is the difference here when we now come to Remembrance Day and we are commemorating or remembering the dead, those who have passed in service to their nation? Well, what came out of that conversation was we have a way of remembering the dead, but not acknowledging the living, those who are currently serving amongst us. And why would that be? Because the dead can't speak back to us. The living are the ones who challenge us right now. Those like James Top, who is going into his court-martial next week after speaking out against the mandates. Corporal James Top, that's happening in our nation right now. Those like Pastor Arthur Pulowski, who has been arrested repeatedly in regards to the mandates and speaking about freedom in various locations to Canadians. And I think the one dramatic arrest that we saw was him being arrested on the highway and dragged in Canada. We have those um, up and comers like Josh Alexander, who suspended from his school because he dared to speak truth, Josh Alexander and save Canada, the Save Canada Army. We have different ones like Kristen and Sarah from Canadian Frontline Nurses. These are the present day soldiers, if you will, of our time who are standing up in various ways. And of course, many other names could be mentioned. But again, when we come to Remembrance Day, we have a way of looking back and not looking at those who are presently challenging the system and standing up for our freedoms. Oh, I will not forget the Honorable Brian Peckford, who, yes, is the last living architect of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And yes, that's what he's known for, but how about now still being here as a witness to witness against the government to say that your travel mandate is unconstitutional and you are going against the freedom of Canadians. These are our present day people who are on the line and we want to remember them because if we're only remembering the fathers, we're forgetting that the strength of the father is the son, the sons and the daughters. And isn't it interesting, out of our conversation came this piece, isn't it interesting that the thing they wanted to remove from our national anthem has to do with sons? Oh, Canada, our home and native land, through patriot love in all our sons command, not in all of us command, in all of our sons, because there needs to be the spirit of a son, that who is received the spirit of a father, and they are in the land. 
we acknowledge them this Remembrance Day weekend and not only acknowledge, but we stand with them. I know that's been a controversial line in these past days of standing with this group and that group, that country and this country. But may I remind you that there's a battle and a war happening right here. And we are wide awake for it. In fact, we have been commissioned to this time for purpose. This is not sorry for the story until next time. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong.